All right, I just finished up what I thought was a tasty lunch. You may not think it's the healthiest, but you know, it's okay for me. And that is a couple of fried eggs and some fried Spam. But I will follow it up with a much more healthy dessert. How about strawberry rhubarb dump cake? But this will be a ketogenic version. If you're interested, keep watching. So a strawberry rhubarb dump cake, and it's as simple as it sounds. Now, dump cake is a new term to me. It's only something I learned about recently. Apparently, it is much more popular in terms of a means of baking dessert desserts in the southern United States than it is here in Canada. But the term dump cake really does accurately describe how this is put together. You literally dump one ingredient on top of another inside your baking dish before you put it in your oven. And that's all there is to it. So I'm going to be doing that shortly. But this is going to have a bit of a twist. I, it's a fire ban out here, so I can't use wood, but I can still use charcoal. And that's permitted in our legislation here, which is great. But I'm going to use a titanium Dutch oven to do this in. If you want to see how that's all done, keep watching. So cooking out in the woods is very much like cooking at home. It's all about managing your time. You have to make sure that everything coordinates. Actually, it's a bit more challenging out in the woods. I have charcoal in a small titanium wood stove that I'll be showing you in a minute. It's come to full heat and I don't want to waste any of that heat. So I very quickly have to put my meal together. So we'll get started. And like I said, this is so, so simple. My baking dish, little aluminum disposable baking pan I got at the dollar store. Into that will go my fruit, the strawberry rhubarb. Now I'm gonna be giving you all the ing ingredients or the recipe itself in the video description, of course, but I just wanna give you this quickly. So it's strawberry and rhubarb, but there's also my monk fruit uh, sweetener in there and just a tiny bit of xanthan gum. To, it'll kind of make it gel up a little bit. So that's dump number one. Dump number two will be the cake mix. Now cake mix is probably not an accurate term for it, but it's basically almond flour, coconut flour. And this I have a little bit of baking powder and a little bit of tiny bit of arrowroot flour. Not enough to increase the carbs any, but something that will help hold it together. Boy, let's hope I didn't misjudge how much this is gonna fill up. Yeah, that should still be good. It is gonna bubble up inside the baking. So hopefully it's not gonna make a mess inside of my pan. And inside of this, or on top of this, is dump number three. And dump number three will be butter, melted butter. And I have, I think it's almost a half a cup of melted butter here. And the idea is that you try to you know, it's a little hard, especially when you're not level. Try to get as much of the surface covered as you can. I think I did a fair job. I am a little worried now that this is going to overflow. I think I can fold the edges up on this a little bit just to give it a little bit more height once it gets inside of my oven. Yeah, that should help a little bit. Okay, I'm going to take that off of my stump here for a moment while I show you my oven. So my oven, titanium Dutch oven from Keith Titanium. I'll put the model of this. This is a two and a half liter titanium Dutch oven. And into that, now titanium is great in terms of, well, it's not a good heat conductor, but it is very tough, very strong. This will withstand the heat with no question at all. You can see I've already done some baking inside of this, but uh, it doesn't do good at holding heat. So you need some kind of thermal mass down inside to hold the heat. And that's where this comes in. This came from the firebox stove. That's just one of their small pizza stones. And that will be my thermal mass. My, it'll grab and hold the heat much and turn it much into like a cast iron. Now, don't get me wrong, it's not a cast iron oven, but it has the ability to cook or bake. So, all right, so now you can see there's my ingredients. Now, how am I going to get the charcoal on top? Well, this is the lid and the lid normally would go on like this, but I have learned that I can put the lid on like that and then put my charcoal in there. So I'll reposition the camera and we'll get that going. All right, hopefully the shadow I'm creating gives you an idea just how much heat that charcoal is producing. All right, so here's what's gonna happen. I'm gonna take some of the coals out. It's gonna go on top of the pan. And there's a lot of heat. A lot of heat. 
Uh, what have I got? I've got five. I think I'll put one more on top for a six. That should pretty much do it, I would think. We'll put that on top. All right, there's nothing more to do now for about 20 minutes to a half hour, and then I'll check it and see how well it's done. What I'm looking for is for the strawberry and rhubarb to start bubbling up through the flour or the cake mix, if you will, on top of that, and then the butter will float over. It should turn a golden brown with the help of the heat on top, and when that's done, I'll know it's ready. I'll be able to take it off of the heat. It does have to cool before you can eat it, but before we get to that point, I'll show you the progress. All right, so it's been about 15, maybe 20 minutes. I wasn't keeping as close a time as I probably should have. I have had a look and I know it is ready to come off. So uh, what I want to show you now first off is that there's a bit of a trick to getting the lid off when you set it upside down like that. I have my tongs, but just a simple set of pot grabbers is all I need to grab the lid. And take, oh, look at, oh, a little bit too much. Yeah, okay, overflowed a little bit on the top, but that's okay. That's to get that off of the heat. I should have taken it off when I looked a minute ago before it overflowed. Ah, just another look. It is done, by the way. I just have an overflow, which I should not have, but it is done. Now, while I've got the Dutch oven off of the stove, I just wanted to point the stove out because just to match the theme of being from Keith Titanium. This is the Keith Titanium wood stove that I reviewed a couple years ago. I actually purchased this one myself. No, sorry, they did send this to me. I was going to purchase it and then, then they offered to send it to me. It makes a great stove for doing charcoal, but it's all about experience. So there's a lot of heat left there that I'm going to use to uh, cook up or boil up some water for coffee. All right, I got to take the dump cake out of the Dutch oven, give it some time to cool off, and when it's finally ready, then we'll do a taste test. Hi folks, this is very embarrassing for me to say, but I just did the taste test for the strawberry rhubarb dump cake and realized after I had finished, I had failed to turn the microphone on. So I won't be able to do that all over again. What I can do instead though, is show you what it looked like from the video with a few clips of it and just explain to you what had happened and how it turned out. So as you saw when I did the reveal of it, a lot of, well, some of it, not a lot of it, of the fruit had boiled out over into the bottom of the titanium pan. And that was absolutely my fault. I had checked on it just a few minutes earlier. It was ready at that point. I should have taken it off the heat and removed it from the pan at that point. But of course I put the lid back on, turned the camera on and then did it and in just that minute or two is all it took for the strawberry rhubarb filling to boil over. Now it didn't ruin it by any means. When it cooled off and I just did the taste test, it was great. It was a little short of the, some of the filling, but it, it was still very, very tasty. Now, a couple things came out of that, my experience. When I did this at home, trying this at home, doing it exactly the same method with the, with the same pot and everything else, I used a different baking dish. I used the pan that comes with the 16 centimeter zebra billy pot, and it's made of stainless steel. It worked out perfect. The only reason I didn't bring that out today was because it is stainless steel and it didn't seem to go with the theme of using a titanium pot. I wanted something that was very lightweight to match a lightweight pot so that's why I brought out the aluminum baking uh, dish or whatever you want to call it. Uh, in hindsight it would have been better for me to bring out the stainless steel one. In the future I'm going to be looking for something that's made of either titanium or anodized aluminum that I can bring out with this if I do any more baking in it. Uh, but you know and in fact I will. I really liked how this turned out. It's all a matter of keeping a watch on what you're doing and that's well that's true of any cooking of auto, uh, that you would do at home so I just wanted to point that out now the only other comment I'll make about the meal itself was um, the edges around the outside got a little browner than I would have liked. Uh, it didn't ruin it. it just, I just avoided eating those edges. And uh, that was due to the amount of charcoal I had put on top. And as you know, if you do any cooking outdoors, especially with charcoal or over, over an open fire, being precise and getting a perfect meal is hard. You know, you can do exactly the same thing two times. One time it'll turn out perfect. The next time, maybe not so good. And there's so many variables, of course, in doing that. Just the same, I wasn't disappointed. In fact, I was so pleased with it that I'll absolutely do baking like this again with that titanium pot. Now, I just want to show you that pot, by the way, because when you last saw it, you saw bubbling strawberry rhubarb in the bottom of it. 
I can't tell you how easy it was to get out. I caught it probably just in time before it stuck. I have a little biodegradable soap and a little scrubby pad, a little water, and it cleaned right up. Now, yes, the pot is discolored, but that's, that's what you get for using pots for Dutch ovens, of course. So that came out now. The, the pizza stone itself, now that took a little bit more work. I had to put some water and, give, and scrub that down, and, but it did come clean as well. Now, the top, the lid that would normally be used on top of the pot, like this, I flipped it upside down to hold my charcoal. It's a little dirty, as you can see, from the charcoal. Now, part of that is, uh, for my lunch, I cooked uh, eggs, I and fried a couple of eggs, and I cooked some Spam in here. So there was some butter in the top of the pot or pan when I put the charcoal on. So, in fact, that's what I've got. It's, it's like seasoning now. It's actually shiny and hard. So, yeah, you know, that's what you get when you use your pots and pans for doing more than just basic cooking and you're going to get some staining on them. I'm not at all disappointed with that. In fact, this has worked out so well. As I mentioned, I will definitely be doing this again. So once again, I apologize that you missed the taste test, but hopefully it, it I compensate for it by giving you some explanation. Now, I'm going to close this out by saying I'll be putting all the information or the, the recipe for the strawberry rhubarb dump cake, both the original one that I found on the internet, plus my version of it, because it had to be much smaller. The original one was supposed to be 10 servings, 10 small servings, but 10 servings, so I had to reduce it in size. It worked out really well. I would recommend you give it a try. If you do, I'd really like to know how it worked out for you. Okay, if you have any comments or questions, put those in the comments section. But until next time, get out and explore and take that path left travel, because it will make all the difference. Bye for now.